During the Falklands War, multiple islands were covered in mines, creating a perfect habitat for penguins without the risk of being disturbed by humans. Welcome to What the Fuck is Actually Happening Now. I'm Rasmus. <laughs> and I'm out of time. And I'm Steve. Oh, and I'm sorry. I think I was meant to interrupt you for consistency. Do you want to start again? <laughs> no, no, this is fine. I can I can barely deal with it. It's a very <laughs> unusual, but an uninterrupted podcast is... Oh, there, there's going to be interruptions, don't worry. Yeah, don't oh, worry. Okay, yeah, no, We're just okay. going to spread them throughout the show. <laughs> Instead of all at the beginning, it's just going to be like yeah. three hours of interruptions. <laughs> nice. this, this isn't Maker's Waffle. We're not going to be that long. <laughs> no, but we talk faster, so it feels dragging. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> So, Steve, James, how the fuck are you doing? Uh, I'm really good. Yeah, well, I'm really good too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent start. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm actually uh, I'm doing really well at the moment. I've uh, I've been working on uh, some Land Rover axes. Well, the yeah. it's, so it basically is axes eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And uh, I was working on two at a time, so it was 11 and 12, and then 13 and 14. And it's been a very long time since I've I've been able to forge any axes. Um, there's there's a whole other discussion about why I have not forged very many things in the last few years and, and all of that. But I'm getting back into the swing of things again, and it's really good, and things are going really well. And, um, and I was copying the pattern of the Land Rover axe, and... Okay, I I need to ask because I want to interrupt you. Yep. What makes a Land Rover axe a Land Rover axe compared to just a normal axe? So I've I've had to explain this a few times to people. Essentially, it's because I keep it in the Land Rover. Um, but yeah, okay, the, so you're based it on the Hudson pattern, or? Uh, no, no, no. This is based on. Uh, it's it's kind of like a. Have you not seen the Land Rover axe? I have, but yeah, it looks nothing ages like a Hudson. Ago. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's. Essentially, it's it's kind of like a, a almost a Scandi style, sort of style uh, bearded axe, um, but it's much broader and um, it's got a very flat top. Whereas most mm. um, Scandi sort of style ones tend to kick up at the top. Yeah, um, I wanted perfect. to have one. Oh. Yes, uh, I wanted to have one that was perfectly flat on top and had quite a um, a prominent uh, like ninety degree vertical section as well on the yeah. actual blade um rather than like most axes where they it's a, a complete curve um mm. i wanted this to be a straight down and then a little kickback um because i wanted it to look reminiscent of the front of the land rover because the the land rover is very rectangular that's um, a simple word for it <laughs> box shaped is another yeah <laughs> on, my... on aerodynamic <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, my, my favorite quote about the Land Rover is if it was meant to go fast, it wouldn't be brick shaped. It's. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it would have, have more than one reverse gear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, anyway, <laughs> shut up, all of you, because it's, it breaks down less than Red's car, so it's fine. Um, nah. Yeah. <laughs> no. I have less to rest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair one. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, that's why it's a Land Rover Axe, because it's, it, I designed it to look vaguely reminiscent of it, and because I, I needed a, an axe to keep in the Land Rover, basically, so I made the Land Rover Axe. I thought it um, was called like that because you would attach it to the front of the Land Rover and have it like two in a cross pattern at the front of the car. Yeah. I I would love to do that, but um, I'm fairly certain unless I like welded it in place, it would get stolen instantly. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, because like uh, tradi traditionally, Land Rovers like the utility ones and the like um, military ones would have a lot of the tools just latched like a attached onto the the outside of it, so they were easy mm. access. Um, so that's what I would I would love to be able to do that with mine, but it's just it's not feasible. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, got the Land Rover Axe, uh, got the design and wanted to make a few more because a bunch of people have asked um, to buy them uh, in the past. Um, and I'm now in, in the position where I'm actually able to make stuff and sell it without having to deal with anything else. And, um, and yeah, the first couple were, like I said, I'm, I'm very out of practice at making axes. And so the first couple 
despite the fact that I was following a design, I just couldn't. There, there was a couple of things I missed, like um, I didn't allow enough uh, depth on the cheeks. So they ended up, the whole thing ended up being a lot um, skinnier in profile. Uh, Please notice the, all the jokes we're not making about the lack of depth in <laughs> your cheeks. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but it, 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 it's a really nice looking axe still. It just mm. looks way more scandy than um, than the uh, the intentional Lanrib one. So 11 and 12 are kind of, um, they're more XC90 than Lanrib Defender. Um, and 13 and 14 are to the original pattern. And it was really nice kind of um, going from those first two and realizing the, um, the steps that I'd missed first time round and then being able to go straighten on the next two and correct those and get that right um so yeah it's just been it's been a really good like week or so just working on these and getting them to the point where um i'm handling them uh at the, well not right now but um today and tomorrow um actually getting the handle sorted and hopefully this weekend being able to put them up for sale which would be great cool remember that 25 is for me I, it's always yes. sold okay yes okay. sorted how about you james well, I've had quite a varied week, I guess. I've started it off unboxing a gantry crane that I got yeah. from China, which, if you can't imagine a gantry cr crane, think of like a child's swing set, except that it's on wheels. And instead of swings, it's just a pulley block uh, for lifting things. Mm. And I am so pleased with it. It can lift two tons and I can move it around and lift it up myself. So for moving heavy things like a printing press or a power hammer or a clicker press, it's been a godsend. It's been quite fun to see 1.2 tons of iron flying through the air at very slow, but still yeah. flying speed. Yeah. Yeah. But it's technically just for putting things up and then you can have a pallet underneath. Well, you're meant to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is they send it with a, a trolley block. So the thing that connects the beam to your chain hoist. Yeah. With a little twirly chain bit that pulls it along the gantry. So surely I'm meant to. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And it works. Definitely. Nothing nothing has exploded. It's still in one piece. And so far everything. Yeah. Yeah. And everything is off the pallets that they've been sitting on precariously, getting worse for the last few years. Nice. Yeah. So that that was the the fun bit, and then the funner bit was a robot arm. Ooh. Yeah, I've seen that, and yeah, and, and it looks awesome. What are you going to use it for? So my initial reason or excuse for buying it is for the laser engraving machine. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I could put like a little suction cup on the end for it to pick up cards. So if you imagine a fiber laser, it's got a, a flat bed on it. You can take a fourth axis, or as they call it in CNC, or like a rotary turntable, put that on it so that it'll laser something and then turn 90 degrees, laser something else. But that still involves you taking things on and off. Yeah. yeah. If I get a robot, then the robot can take things on and off. Oh. Or yeah. you can attach the laser to the robot and... Lasers. Isn't that how Terminator started? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Especially know. if you give that robot laser and ChatGPT. <laughs> there we go. Fun, I like, guarantee I'm... someone's already done that. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I meant to install Mid Journey. It was meant to do art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the laser on the wall. That doesn't sound any better. <laughs> probably I've just, not. I've just got this really weird mental image of a a Terminator with a like shoulder mounted laser dressed as Va Vincent van Gogh. And it's <laughs> brilliant. Why not? Only to one ear though. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, just a bad Make space for the laser. And... <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well yeah. done. <laughs> I was going to go for Scary Night. <laughs> oh. But then maybe well that's done. just a bad, a bad Halloween film. <laughs> Vincent van Gogh is a robot laser. <laughs> I would watch that. I do watch everything. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, I do. That's because you finished Netflix. Uh, I even had to send him Norwegian yeah. movies. Yep. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's a dangerous territory. <laughs> Although, it wasn't, wasn't Again, Troll Hunt Perth, Norwegian? Yeah, it was. Yeah. That, that That's found film. footage, though. Uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, and a yeah. broken clock is still right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. That, that, that depends entirely on how it's broken. I've I never thought so about it like that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you snap it in half, then, yeah. yeah. Uh, or if it's like one wheel is missing a cog tooth or something, it's like it will skip. It will never be right. Yeah, or if everything goes a bit Salvador Dali and bendy over, <laughs> yeah, yeah, then maybe it's right more than twice a day. Okay. Ooh, or or not? Oh. <laughs> Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> um. So, Red, how what how are you? What have you been up to this week? Shut up, Steve. It's not your podcast. <laughs> uh, as I said, I'm out of time. I I'm at this point of summer that I uh, where I don't really know what day it is anymore. Hmm. Yeah, um, we noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I sent a message to Raz and Jan yesterday. Uh, big, big, uh, big hug to Jan, by the way, who's uh, sick at home. Um, uh, I, I sent a message say, saying, oh, we need a topic for tonight. <laughs> and Raz was like, no, it's not today, it's tomorrow we are recording. Oh. So I, I, I don't know what day it is anymore. But yeah, I had a, a good week. Uh, my in-laws came you for a few think days. It was week, but okay. I, I hope I hope it was a week. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not sure anymore, but I I, I hope. Uh, my in-laws came for a few days, so it was it was nice to be with them. And and uh, it's been a long time since I I, I saw them uh, last time, maybe a few months. Mm -hmm. uh, the kid was happy, the wife was happy, I was happy, they were happy. So all in all, it was a, a great three days. Uh, did a ton of editing uh, video and audio and for something that I can't talk about just yet <laughs> um, and played with leather. I just here, but you don't need to pretend <laughs> like we're here. <laughs> that's Shut true, up. that's true. So I did editing, <laughs> I did so many things. Uh, um, yeah, and played with leather for an uh, ongoing project that is taking way too much time compared mm. to what I initially thought I would need to, to do it. Um, yeah. How is this different from every other time? <laughs> Not much, but yeah. yeah, I really need to to start to focus on, on simply our project. Like this one is not that complicated, but there is so much stitching. That yeah. I can I can just spend the day stitching parts to the thing and not get anywhere. Yeah. So yeah, I just need to find solution to to get the stitching done either by the sewing machine that I've behind me and still can't really use for reasons, uh, or just find another way to attach stuff to stuff. So revert. Is that also or... secret reasons? Sorry. I... No, the sewing machine is that I'm not happy with the, it, it's sewing fine, but I don't, um, I don't like the thread I'm using. I, and I, I, I want a bigger thread. Or, or, uh, or wider or, or thicker. thicker or thread, um, and I I can't make the damn machine work with the thick thread. So mm -hmm. I'm working on it uh, from time to time to just m try to make it work. Yeah. And after three or four hours, I I kick it and I I swear and go away and come back to it like two months later. Yeah. So that's okay. why I can't use it for the moment and I'm stitching everything by hand. Um, so yeah, yeah, that that's a good reason. Yeah, yeah I mean, industrial machines are, are, are yeah, they're unlike other sewing machines. They are dangerous. They have got proper gearboxes in. They will bite yeah. through your finger, and adjusting the tension on them is complicated. Yeah, it is very complicated. And the fun fun thing is that Marcus, that we had a, as a guest uh, a few months back, uh, was super kind uh, to me and sent me two other sewing machine uh, industrial leather sewing machine. Um, <clears throat> same brand, Faf, old machines uh, in pretty good state. And when th they got delivered at my house uh, or my parents' house, uh, because that's the place where I have kind of stolen place or room that I can use, uh, because here it, I not possible. So it's in my uh, parents' place in the in the garage. Um, I got two of them, and I was supposed uh, to I was supposed to restore them and make a video about that. Um, but as my schedule was full, I'm pushing that a little bit till September probably. But my dad, being my dad, um, <laughs> being a mechanic and 
his first job as he was probably 16, hmm. uh, 18, was to fix a sewing machine in a big factory. Oh, oh cool. So he couldn't resist. And he uh, asked me, can I, can I restore one, please? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Take that one and, and have fun with it. Um, okay, did you give I, him the easy one or the difficult one? Uh, I, give, I give him the easy one, to okay. be honest, because one, one is pretty much uh, locked. The, the, all the gears inside are so clogged with old oil mm -hmm. that it, it, it doesn't move uh, anymore. So I gave him the easy one, easier one, easiest one, I don't know. Uh, and he's playing with it with it since uh, since they arrive. But my dad is is not young anymore, so he's working like thirty minutes one hour uh, when he has time and when he has the, the the will to do so. But he's that close to make it work. So Ooh. so that's great. And when I will be doing the restoration myself, uh, he can he can tell me what to be careful about and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But yeah, the goal is to have um, two machines. One with a flat bed, uh, the, the one was behind me, and the other one is a, uh, I don't know how it's called in English, but arm, cannon arm. Cylinder arm. Cylinder arm, thank you, James. Uh, which would be, like having both would really help me work in working condition with the thread that I want, I want to use uh, would help me so much with everything yeah. that I want to do. So yeah, that that that's one of my uh, goal for, autumn fall to have both machine ready to work uh, so yeah nice. what about you Raz? how was your week yes <laughs> you need uh, a class right yeah oh, so yeah whole shitload of things yeah uh was, first yeah. class in the new workshop yeah uh i did not as you might have seen i did not finish the ribbon burner forge in time I, I didn't even bother trying to go to like a plumbing supply store to get any of the shit yeah. sorted mm -hmm. because I looked at the parts and realized all of these are American. It will take thinking. Yeah. I don't have brain space just now. I'll leave it on the shelf for, for a little while. Good um, and, or, or worst case, I'll buy parts here in Norway instead and I'll send them off to someone who will care to fiddle with silly electrical, silly American things. Uh, but yeah, I, I've ended up having a couple of meetings, actually, mm. both with uh, Metalcraft UK, who I bought like a Pumbi cold forging bendy thing for. Mm -hmm. I yeah. met them at Make, uh, Maker Central, not this year, but last year, first time. And I, I saw the tool and realized like, yes, I want to buy this. I want everything. Uh, and they gave me a nice little deal for it. And then now having used it for a little while, I met them at Maker Central and it's like, okay, I had thoughts and I had feedbacks on this machine. And he was like, yes, please, uh, but not right now. Can we have a meeting on it? And <laughs> it's been a couple of months because he's been busy, I've been busy and all of the shit. But yeah, so I actually managed to have a bit, little bit of a chat with them and sort of troubleshoot a few things I was struggling with, with the machine. Mm -hmm. And also like, they have a stupid amount of different size screws and bolts on that thing. Mm. But, and it's annoying as hell because like, if you want to adjust more than one thing, you need three different allen wrenches or something yeah so and, if, if you think that that's bad you should try owning a land rover there's, <laughs> there's, there's i have a only... french car the thing is with the land rover there is not only do you have like metric um like bolts and nuts you have mm -hmm. imperial bolts and nuts oh, and man. occasionally yeah. you'll find a whitworth bolt yeah. or nut which oh, is fun. Yeah, it, it, that that was confusing when I tried to take the uh, the um, side panels off the other day. Um, yeah, don't 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 do that. Uh, but to be fair, that's one thing that I think more companies are becoming aware of is the fact that if if there's three different uh, bolts on a thing, just hmm. make them all the same size. Like even if it means yeah. you need to over engineer one that you know, say it only needs to be a an M three bolt. Like, but everything else is an M5. Just make it an M5. Mm. Makes it so much easier. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's basically what I told them as well. Like, no. I, I get like, and also they have um, some mixture of imperial and metric stuff on this thing as well. Yeah. Just because of how it has been iterated upon over years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they still want to have as few different parts for it as possible, sort of in yeah. manufacturing. Mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But if you were to ever completely redesign this thing, yeah, fucking clean it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, just yeah. drill, drill out the holes. Go one yeah. size up to metric. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's not hard. 
like it it's the same thing as like when someone uh builds a an app or something like that and they never clean up their code and it mm. just becomes this complicated mess it's like just just you know what you need to do just not necessarily restart but just take out all the gumph and clean things up um yeah, yeah. at least recognize what is useless <laughs> yeah in there yeah uh but yeah yeah um so there was that i had a class which was excellent it was also kind of nice to only have four students instead of the normal six mm -hmm. because i it was a bit more space for everyone it was a bit easier to sort of get everything going correctly and yeah. i didn't have to like clean up the shop more <laughs> was it uh, was it a bigger space though is it four people in a bigger space as well yeah uh mm -hmm. roughly speaking i mean the old space was at a bad layout so it mm. felt really small and clunky to work in even though technically it was like the whole forging area there i don't know it might have been like 120 square meters of metal shop mm. now i have 90 but even though half of that is already taken up with welding table and machines yeah. and tooling the remaining whatever 40 square meters because other buildings uh, other parts of the rooms other rooms in the building as well that's a sentence and a half uh it, uh, there was still plenty of space so it felt mm. really nice and it was easy for me to walk around people and see things and get over there and help them so yeah. it'll hopefully not feel too cramped when i have six students in preferably yeah. also when i have more shelves and less shit on floor and more vertical shit uh but we'll see yeah um then i had uh a steel supplier stop by as a customer meeting kind of thing which felt very weird because he came in looking clean <laughs> <laughs> and it's like yeah i'll not shake your hand because mine are currently black <laughs> yeah <laughs> because i got new steel delivered from you yeah that's nice <laughs> and i've been handling it and it's covered in oil which is brilliant because it was raining when it got there and it's still not rusty hey. but my hands are messy uh, I mean, but if, yeah, you're, uh, if you got it from another supplier would you have been caught black handed Dirt too hard. Hand? You're trying too hard. Dirt yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. It does sound like the beginning of something. They're like, oh no, the steel supply is here. And I've ordered from <laughs> someone else. Uh, yeah, long story short, with them, uh, with all, all the workshop, they had a deal. So they would like give us 40 to 50% discount on steel, no matter the quantity. Nice. Awesome. And I just mm -hmm. gently asked and said, so I moved shop. Uh, but I am the nice one, so can I keep it? <laughs> ah, and he nice. was like, yeah, sure, we, we can make that work. I'll stop by one of these days. Brilliant. Uh, and then same day, uh, which I think technically is not a spoiler, <laughs> but we haven't posted about it. Uh, Thomas, one of our patrons, and his wife stopped by to make their wedding rings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is really fun. And you both of them are like, Say again? Have you not posted about that? I'm sure I've seen that on Instagram. Yeah, uh, no, I did. Your story. Story, about it. Yeah. story about it. Yeah. Okay. But it's one of those things where, like, I don't feel like I should post too much about this. Yeah. Mostly because yeah. it's their thing. Yeah. Uh, and he's also behind on the podcast, so chances are he will listen to this episode <laughs> after he's <been> married. <laughs> when is the wedding? Uh, the day before I head to the US. Yeah, it hurts a lot. Uh, so what is that? In a month, <laughs> six weeks or something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but it was great fun because the, both of them uh, uh, work with their hands a lot. She's mm -hmm. a uh, she's a painter and he's a carpenter, but yeah. they have both been changing jobs recently, so they're no longer working with their hands every single day. Mm -hmm. And having them show up and do something completely different, but still making it was really fun to see how they like yeah. really keyed in and got concentrated and like, just enjoyed themselves, despite it just being lots and lots of sanding and Dremel work <laughs> and <laughs> fiddly tiny bits. Yeah, but it was great fun and. Uh, is that something you would consider offering, like the kind of services of the class you would offering you would be offering to clients from now on? I mean, it's long sh short answer is yes. Long answer is it will be expensive, and I will need to figure out the system and the routine yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have anything against it myself, but I would need to figure out how to price this correctly. Mm -hmm. yeah. while giving them a good experience without wearing them out and having a good system for having them feel like they're doing most of the work on making the ring. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was thinking about this, like one of the things I could try to do is like drill out the center or use a lathe to turn the outside and like have them sort of fiddle with a bit of the knobs and sort of just tell them to 
use this thing very slowly and yeah. take off a bit and I'll tell them to stop and back it off again. Like that could be something that could be fun, but I don't have a lathe and I don't really want to stuff a lathe into the workshop. Why not? And it's irregular and it's forged. And it turns out that's difficult to hold on a lathe because I already tried. So when, because Joe did his, uh, he, yeah. he made his own ring. Um, <clears throat> and I think he, I don't think he even used the lathe. I think he did it all uh, like forge work or, or by hand. Yeah, but come yeah. on, it's Joe. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. But I was going to say like, you, you could definitely do um, a lot of the work if you, if you had the tooling set up. You could do a lot of it at the anvil using a, a mandrel or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you've yeah. got on your other desk that you're currently grabbing. Yeah. So, I mean, I ah. just took it out of the coffee when I got home uh, yeah. an hour or so ago. Uh, so I just need to sound a little bit. But yeah, I mean, uh, also I'm doing this the difficult way, I think, mm. because I'm lap welding. It's Damascus, so I'm lap welding it uh, mm -hmm. uh, instead yeah. of punching a hole in flat bar. Yeah. If that makes sense. Because yeah. I, I, just because it's more difficult, and because I think I, I like, <laughs> I like to see how the pattern flows around it instead of yeah. being interrupted by the hole and sort of the yeah. negative space that used to be there. Uh, can, but yeah, can basically, I suggest something though. Hmm? The, uh, I've seen a lot of people uh, punching a hole in coins and hammering the coins yeah. in order to make rings. Yeah. So what you could do is create a, um, yes, Damascus pat pattern, punch a hole. And then have them work their way to mm. to yeah. turn That's... the flat flat thing into a ring. I was going to say it's not a terrible idea. Because the other thing you could do, rather than because if you've got a Damascus hole, a Damascus um, billet, and you just drill a hole through, then yeah, the, the pattern doesn't flow. Yeah. But if you punch a very small hole and mm. then drift through it, you can create a really yeah. nice pattern. Yeah. Goes on. The same as like if you were to do it with um, <clears throat> with raw then it would yeah. like the, the grain would flow around you might have like a start and end point but then it would flow around that as well yeah uh i'll have to experiment with that mm. but still i mean I, I still have a need to figure out a system for this and i need to yeah. get some kind of feel for how long is this expected to take yeah. because if it just leaves them having to hand sand for four hours straight i mean that's not going to be fun for anyone no but equally, uh, if, you're, if you're doing it really quickly, so my my wedding ring, I made mine and is patterned steel Damascus as well. I did it on yeah. the lathe. It took me yeah. twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah but I spent you ages know doing... how. No, I do, oh, I, it's just cutting something on a lathe and then polishing it. Yeah. The reason I did mine quickly is because my wife took ages, and I just yeah. needed yeah. something for me. And I was like, oh, that'll do. I'll fix it next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, are you gonna? Are you gonna are you go, sorry, James? Are you gonna remake them? I did think about it. Yeah. So the the engagement ring I made, no, because that took ages. <laughs> and I did, but I did think about doing mine. Mine is just a, it's a stainless steel pattern welded thing. It looks like wood because uh, that grain uh, doesn't wrap around. So it just yeah. cuts a hole through the center. Mm -hmm. um, Steve. J sorry, I seem to remember you at the wedding telling a story about losing a bit of gold or a a, a gem or something that went flying off in the yeah the workshop yeah did you ever find that oh no no, no it vaporized as in oh. so oh. doing making the engagement ring uh for my wife i cast it uh so i i created a 3d model resin print the model did investment you know lost wax casting so mm -hmm. you take your resin printed model put it in fancy plaster burn it out and then put the metal inside but mm -hmm. to get the detail one of the ways you do it is centrifugal casting casting yeah. so yeah. you have a big arm kind of in a in a barrel uh wound back with a spring that you hold in place heat up your metal and then let the spring go and the metal flies from kind of the inside to the outside into the mold if something catches it doesn't fly into the mold it just flies uh. so there is some very expensive dust somewhere in the workshop that almost <laughs> certainly has been <laughs> swept up yeah now Look I at it this way, system. your property value increased. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that doesn't make me feel any better. Yeah. <laughs> you have a metal detector that you can use to... Uh, yeah, it's a workshop. It's full yeah. of metal detectors. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, more grinding dust. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yes, long story short, uh, 
it was fun. It was great fun to see them try to make to make see them make the rings and fill with it and sort of guide them through it. Yeah. And having them being fairly handy from the beginning was a big help. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it would be cool to offer as a regular thing, but I don't know how to sell that or package that as a good thing yet. Yeah, yeah. but I guess else, yeah. it's the sort of thing that you might you do these random things and suddenly that's what you're known for. Yeah, like roses. Yeah. <laughs> for some odd reason it keeps being the roses and heart hooks <laughs> do, do we have to point out the segue before it's yeah sorry I usually that's that's, that that's, that's yeah. someone's <laughs> job yeah <laughs> i mean seeing as your hand's not here and i do it, you did it. Podcast, it's, yeah. yeah that segues sorry. perfectly into our topic no that's your podcast <laughs> yeah that... <laughs> <laughs> We only close out after the fact. Yeah, but he he done the segue. Yeah, and then, and then we were waiting for you to. to and then you said the something about roses. Yeah, <laughs> and then stared blankly at all of us. Yeah. So, uh, Raz, would <laughs> you say that you are known for the roses? Uh, in in like everywhere you go, the markets. Well, I kind of know. I have a different insight, but is that is forged roses the thing that you are known? for in the community and outside the community no i well it's not a thing i'm known for it's just happened to be the one thing i make the most and sell the most of mm -hmm. like half of all the sales i have is a rose really yeah That's a, yeah okay and the other half is like knives or is it uh, again divided in separate uh, in different stuff if i recall correctly roses are about yeah, just about 50% of my sales. And then hard hooks might be 20%. And then with some incremental stuff after that. And silly enough, I never done a lot of knives. So I never really sold many of them. Mm. Okay. As I was gonna say, I've I've never made a single blacksmith rose. Yeah. Now, I've still got the, the blanks that you gave me. They're up there somewhere. And uh, I will get around to it at some point. I just yeah. next year. <laughs> Maybe. Five minutes before the next mortgage payment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you, what would you say you're known for, Raz, in the community and that's how the community? Making noise, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Outside. So that's outside of the community, I, right? <laughs> I, I would argue that inside the community, you're known for your appetite. Yeah. 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 That's, I think that's, that's, all that's all I, everywhere. Also... <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems to be a thing that. People just see me eat and they draw conclusions from that. And I don't know why. Because, because they, see they never you see me doing often. anything but eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is true. why I'm looking forward to going to Germany because <laughs> they have wonderful bratwurst. They do have wonderful bratwurst. So are you known for that? Do you think within your different, so say, scouts or dancing or blacksmithing in Norway or making internationally, is that the common thread? Or at least yeah, the one single truth? That I eat a lot, yeah. So <laughs> this, this is actually hilarious because a like, little while, while ago, uh, Facebook tossed up a memory and one of them was a friend of mine complaining 10 years ago that all pictures of me was me eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on brand. sounds about right. <laughs> all so around. yeah, it, it, it's a weird thing apparently. Well, whenever we see you, you do turn up with food and, well, there's something in a bottle. We can't really call it drink, but you turn up with food. <laughs> and according to Neil, mouthwash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even wash my mouth with it, I'll be honest. It I, works, though. It, it's good for lighting fires. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's lucky it. It's not that bad. It's just an acquired taste. <laughs> Reminds me of Ocean's Eleven. If you remember the, the movie, every time they see Brad Pitt in the movie, he's eating something. Yeah. That's oh. that's why he's uh, yeah. always eating something. I, I've yeah. forgotten about that. But yeah. yeah. It's a great movie. How about you guys, though, instead of being all about me? Yeah, James. The easy answer is probably brewing. Mm. I mean, it's kind of in the name, malt and make. Mm. And it's I think it's more not because I do a lot of it, because it's a relatively rare thing in the maker community yeah. to make beer. Lots mm -hmm. of people have tried making beer or have, you know, gone on a homebrew course or something, or they, you know, their dad used to do homebrew and they have fond memories of doing that. Or you might make wine with your grandma, but 
maybe bringing 80 litres of beer to make a central one year did I, somewhat cement it in people's mind. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, the, yes. fact, the fact that you brewed enough beer to feed everyone in your hotel room, which... Yeah. Allegedly. Would, yeah, which is a, <laughs> a lot of people. Um, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, I think that's what kind of did it, because, like, let's say, like, every, a lot of people will have a go at, at something like that, but you did it on a much larger, much more significant scale. Um, yeah. And also, like, it's... How can I put this nicely without it meaning to insult everyone else? Like, you you do it very well. You You make beer that people want to drink whereas most people kind of give it a go they make something that's vaguely alcoholic and <laughs> then never do it again yeah, no, no one drinks it more than once yeah mm. yeah exactly but i think it's also for me something i'm very comfortable talking about in terms of uh, you know, expertise yeah i think we all we always say as makers you know i don't oh i'm not an expert i just give everything a go and yeah. while i'm definitely not an expert at making beer i think i know enough about it that I could easily teach it or yeah. you know if someone wanted to give me a talk on making something that that's what mm. I'd do I'd pick yeah. making beer yeah you you have a like a I was going to say just an above average knowledge but it's it's more than average you have a an intermediate knowledge of yeah. um, of beer making yes yeah, yeah, so I think you're pursuing now you you keep on doing now and want to still perfect the craft of beer making or is that something that you you know enough to make the beer that you enjoy drinking and you stick to it? I think I probably know enough to do that, but always there's something else. So mm -hmm. the next kind of challenge I want to do is making kind of a, an extract of hops. So hops are a wildflower that give the bitterness and a lot of the mm -hmm. flavor to beer. Mm -hmm. And if you distill them, so if you put them in a, a solvent like alcohol uh you can dissolve away the really nice compounds but mm -hmm. they boil at a very low temperature so what you have to do is put it in a rotor vat um so if you distill it under a lower than atmospheric pressure you get it to boil off at a temperature that doesn't destroy the flavors uh -huh. the difficulty is you have to have a rotor vat to do that and now i have a rotor vap so i want to do that. hey hey of course a rotor vap. <laughs> so imagine are you familiar with a liebig condenser no <laughs> okay long shot imagine a, a column that's got a twisted coil inside it if you pass okay. water through that coil like a heat exchanger yeah, yeah yeah if you heated something up and let the vapors go down that bit they would condense and drip out that's your kind of like a like a still yeah it's exactly like a pot still yeah except rather than having just an open system you have it so it's connected up to a vacuum pump Okay. So you can oh. reduce the pressure inside it. And the pot, rather than being a fixed copper thing sitting on the ground in some fancy Scottish or grotty Norwegian distillery, yeah. making lovely Scotch or mouthwash, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's sitting inside a, a heated bath that's very carefully temperature controlled and it rotates round inside that bath. Um, so it's a rotary evaporator. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah so looking into making kind of hop terpenes um, as an additive, because I, I grow a few hops in, on the side of the workshop, essentially, but of not enough to do. put into yeah. beer. <laughs> Did you ever uh, try or want to try to make whiskey, scotch, or, or, or different alcan of alcohol? It crosses my mind every once in a while. But yeah. as, as we've already alluded to, there's quite a lot of skill behind distilling and making nice alcohol from mm. whatever. Uh, yeah, you know, grain, grape, fruit. Um, yeah. and well, a it lot of... uh, you, uh, there's a few plants that I was not supposed to uh, cut <laughs> in my young age on the top of the mountains uh, nearby that you can just put in some alcohol uh, with a little bit of sugar, wait a few yep. years, and you get some very cool stuff. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like you can. So the fermenting bit's really easy. Yeah, you can turn sugar into alcohol quite. Yeah, you, know, you leave it outside long enough, and it'll happen. Yeah, but the distilling bit's the difficult bit because you're yeah. then essentially concentrating a lot of either the off flavors, you know, at best, and at worst, you're distilling bits that are actively more toxic than alcohol. Yeah. So 
the first bit that comes off when you distill stuff, the heads, uh, as it gets called, is very or significantly higher in methanol, which is mm. very toxic to your optic nerve. So the chance of making yourself blind is not unreasonable, which is yeah. why it's illegal. It's not a it's not that inherently it's it you know it could be taxed, but in lots of countries yeah. it's as much for the safety aspect as it is for the tax reasons. Yeah. And I that- I was just gonna say because that's where the the kind of uh, the myth of drinking enough to make you go blind, or yeah. that 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 gin or that moonshine will make you go blind is from that. Yeah, because it's, absolutely. It's, 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 yeah, but and I think the risk is probably not as high as people say. But equally, if you want to get good at something, you have to practice a lot. And I don't want to practice poisoning myself <laughs> with something I'm not choosing to poison myself with. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of the bit I think of is really interesting about distilling is the aging and the blending. And mm-hmm. yeah, you can have one barrel of aged spirits. So if you think of vodka and gin, it's it's distilled and it's served. But yeah. rum mo- or many rums, whiskies, even one of the acavies I've had is barrel aged. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the skill really is being able to blend those and you lose a certain amount the kind of angel share and you know barrels at the top of the house uh the, the storage house is going to be different to ones at the bottom yeah and i think to really have a an interesting hobby you probably have to have enough barrels that it's not a hobby anymore yeah mm. yeah exactly so yeah i think i think it's alcoholic beverages that people know me for because i've done i've done mead and cider and wine and lots of beer but maybe maybe the other thing is tools. I, I was just about to say, yeah, the other thing would obviously be having the tool for everything. Almost. I do have a list of things I don't have. It's not very, it's not very long <laughs> tell. anymore. It's quite do tell. Do tell. Which one don't you have? Oh, uh, like, okay, from a leatherworking point of view. Yeah, uh, please. So, Sky Because machines... I am absolutely not, not jealous of you. <laughs> absolutely yes. not. <laughs> not. Not slightly at all. <laughs> Don't worry. When I when I start doing kits for people to make red, you're going to be my first tester to Please. to try yeah, them out. I would love to. Uh, so leatherworking, I think it'd be really cool to own one of the machines that will cut leather thinner. Mm-hmm. So not like mm-hmm. you can get bench top skivers. You can skive things by hand and make them thinner in a particular place. And yeah. you yeah. can get bell skivers. So they're the ones that you often see that you pass leather across them. They look a bit like a sewing machine. Mm-hmm. And they'll cut a channel or a slightly wider bit, but to take a whole skin of leather and make it one thickness, yeah, that would be cool. Because I think a lot of, well, maybe not a lot of leather working, but you get to a point of thinking, like, oh, you know what? I wish I had a thinner piece of this exact leather rather than having to, yeah, exactly like that, Steve. Yeah. It, it, all of the all of the uh, listeners, yes, that's exactly <laughs> uh, the, the best that's the audio thing. content. <laughs> I, yeah. I've just realized that I've got a machine that, that James doesn't, that I, well, I, I, I do have a desktop one and I have a, I have a like a bell sky, but I just don't have the big wide one that uh, do okay. whole sheets. Yeah. Yes. Which I don't need at all. <laughs> but I just think they're really cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did you ever really need the Heidelberg press or a robotic arm? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Course. I'm wrong. No, fair <laughs> this is vital to my daily professional life as yeah. not a maker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of course it is. Move on. So go on, Steve. We've, we've talked yeah. about meat long enough. Steve, what about you? What about me? What about me? What? The, yeah, oh, okay. sorry. The, no, yeah. no, the, oh, the topic. That's exactly, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> sorry. That you pointed out earlier. In the bus. Uh, he's trying to self-segue and just he's outsmarting us all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, definitely not. Um, I, what? See, I've been trying to think think of this like the entire time, and I think that like the things that I'm probably most well known for is being a uncomfortable about talking about myself, um, and uh, and also just being Steve, uh, yeah. because the fact that at uh, Maker Central this year there was uh, a number of people that were walking around with "Hello, my name is Steve" badges and stickers yeah. that had no idea who I was. <laughs> but they were just like, and so I said, "Oh, have you met Steve?" And they were like, "There's a real, th- he's an actual person." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's me. Um, <laughs> it's one of those. I'm so things. happy that it's still going on. This thing, <laughs> yeah. but like the thing is, it kind of leaks into like my real life as well. And occasionally, I have to explain to people why 
why there's a bunch of people wearing like uh, my name is Steve stickers or why Good. I have a thing that says <laughs> stuff like that. And it's like, it's one of those things where it's really weird. Like, because it, when you're talking to to people in in real life uh, outside of this community, um, and they kind of say like, "Oh, what, you know, so what do you do or whatever?" And you say like, "For me, I just normally say like, oh, 'I'm a blacksmith.' I don't go into any more detail than that." But then when you get to know people better, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, I I can't do it tonight. I'm recording a podcast," hmm. and they go, well, "What do you mean you're recording a podcast?" <laughs> and you have to explain that, and then you have to explain the the YouTube thing, and then you have to explain this, and hmm. And then it, trying to explain the fact that you've got, a, or that there's a bunch of people that uh, call themselves by your name mm -hmm. uh, for the lulls. And <laughs> and it, there's just no way to explain it without it sounding absolutely ridiculous. Um, because it is. Yeah. Yes, very much so. Yeah, but um, it makes life so much more fun. Yeah. yeah, but for everyone else except for me on stage, no, going, why? I feel awkward. <laughs> you sh you should really take it as a as a proof of love from the whole community, because yeah. that's that's exactly what it is. Oh, oh yeah, a hundred percent. It it. But I, again, as as is quite well known, I'm um not great at taking compliments or uh, yeah, but you should be being nice about myself. I I tend yeah, to but go, you should be. I I, I, sh I should be a lot of things, right? Yeah, um, we're gonna work on that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think like in terms of like within this community, I guess it, it's probably that and uh, being <laughs> like be, being the guest on so many other podcasts as well as my own. <laughs> um, and just kind of like a, a default like filler for uh, for if one of the hosts is out or a guest drops out, it's like I oh, just get Steve on; he's fine. He's he's, he's got recording set up. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, I, I don't really know. I, I, again, like, I, because I'm kind of, I, I, I struggle um, talking, words. yes, with words, uh, but talking about like myself in that sort of sense. Like, there's, there's a few things that I don't mind being like, oh, yeah, I'm really good at this, or I'm whatever. Like, I know that I'm a good teacher, um, but I don't know if that's, well known within the the community um i think so yeah. it is now because we've seen you or uh, i mean for the people we've seen you at mega central or in different shows yeah. teaching and showing what is blacksmithing mm. like what is forging i think everybody knows that you're really good at that and you're able to make people understand what's forging when they have when it's the first time they've ever seen yeah someone forge yeah yeah i mean it, like I, said, I i think I, i'm just uncomfortable being nice about myself and i it's we can like, tell and we're having fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> fuck you guys <laughs> um, um so yeah I, I i guess i just i don't really know what to to say because it, it i don't know like listening to james talk about um, what he's known for, like it, it, I was listening to it, and being like, "Yeah, that's really true," and like, "Oh yeah, because of this as well," and and like being really encouraged by it. But when when it comes to myself, it feels like anything I say uh, about myself is just going to come off, come across as being like really arrogant. And even though I know it's like you've asked me the question, I should be able to answer it, but I can't. So maybe that's what I'm most like. I don't know if that is what I'm most well known for. I guess I'm probably just most well known for being a host of Fools with Tools and uh being a, a a blacksmith i guess maybe yeah. i think well, we yeah can, i think probably can... the podcast is the most that i'm known for you're known for being on the podcast but that, yeah that's that's not you so i i'm gonna be <laughs> i'm gonna be your hype man and that that's a phrase that i've said before <laughs> uh so like think of joe when joe was talking about you guys um in terms of the thornwood forge set i was like what does steve bring and he's like great teacher and a great people person mm. so it is being able to connect between different groups and you said oh no i just fill in on podcast and it's like mm. well that's because you're really able to talk to lots of people and people think oh you yeah. know who's nice steve mm. and not just like oh he's nice but we'll bring him on it's yeah. oh who's who's a really good connector of people who's going to be able to draw something out of somebody else in a positive way who's going to be 
not there sitting awkwardly in the silence going i'm the guest you will tell me when the next topic comes up <laughs> or going, oh, okay let me you know let me talk yeah. about something else we, we always tease you for being on other people's podcasts and taking them over yeah. Yeah. and yeah. it's not because you're desperate to have the attention you're just like oh i want to keep everyone talking i want to be yeah. the the linchpin of a community as much as oh yeah you, you can fill in your bingo card for community everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah all right I, I i will take that thank you james that was incredibly sweet and i guess quite true as well but yeah okay you're also, you also known to have a jimmy yes <laughs> I, I would be nothing if it wasn't for jamie <laughs> bless him and i'm not jealous at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you have to get your own you've got you've got a Raz, I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cream for that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. All right then, Red. Well, what about you? What are you known for? Uh, yeah, I guess leather. I, I I think that's the the again the the obvious answer. But um, I'm kind of I'm kind of proud f for that somehow. Mm. Maybe because I was. Um, one of the first to make videos about leather work mm. or leather working uh, back in the days. And now I'm seeing so much people picking up uh, on that craft that was kind of forgotten, not before me, because I, 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 it was forgotten long before. And I was one of the many that were, uh, that was doing um, leather work on, on YouTube uh, a few years uh, ago. Uh, but now it's like, uh, I think it's a little bit more popular. So um, I don't feel alone anymore in, in that kind of sense, like many people are doing it. Mm. Um, so that that's great. Um, I'm happy to be known for doing leather um, because maybe what I'm doing with leather is, is worth watching or the way that I'm doing it is is good enough somehow um but I, I, it, it's a little bit strange for me because it, it the goal of the channel when i started it on like the, my youtube channel when i started it was to be able to um learn show and teach what i have learned over the years um but also do a little bit of everything so being known only for my leather work is a kind of a, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not super happy with it, but turns out that's what I do the most. So it's it's like it's only natural that people know me for my leather work. It's, um, sorry, I was just going to say it's funny that you say that because when I think of you, I do genuinely think yeah, leather work, but I also think blacksmithing. I also think. Um, like the restoration stuff that you like the um like building your own tools and things like that that you've done like mm. i it, despite the fact that i don't i can't even remember when the last time you put out a blacksmithing video was i still think of you as a blacksmith as well yeah uh, maybe because we we've we forged together in the same yeah. place so it, it's maybe more obvious for you but yeah uh, your last video about blacksmithing that i did was was years ago i i mm. I broke something in my arm. It took a very long time to heal. So I'm planning on going back to blacksmithing video again and forging again, even for me on a regular basis, because yeah. that's oh, something do, I really enjoy. Do you want to tease what you're doing or planning to do with the forge that you have? Uh, yeah, I'm planning on extending it because my, yeah. my small smithy yeah. is, is really small. <laughs> 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 it was, it's fine. I mean, I can forge on my own, but, um, yeah it's small so as it's on my at my parents place uh and there are laws and regulation about um the space that you can use outside of your house uh, or home on your land and also because my smithy my middle forge is surrounded surrounded by my mother's plants and flowers i needed their um green light in order to yeah cut a few stuff and <laughs> expand the forge um so i worked them <laughs> uh, for two years <laughs> <laughs> and after a year or so my dad was on my side so it took another year Brilliant. for my mother to be like, nah, okay do the fuck you want <laughs> so 
I'm planning on extending the forge um, starting September. Nice. Um, I could have done that during summer, but to be honest, it's crazy hot at the moment in France. We only had one week of bad weather, but and that's since... the weather part of the bingo. Yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah. We have we have to do it. Otherwise, people complain. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, the, uh, end of June till now, every day is above set above thirty degree and. Mm. That's the, a fuck no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there is a heat wave hitting thousand uh, fronts at the moment. And we are expecting uh, above uh, temperatures above 38 degrees starting Sunday or Saturday. That's a, that's a double fuck no. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I'm not expanding the forge at the moment. That's why I'm not working outside. Well, that's not what I'm not forging or doing yeah. metal working or even woodworking outside in the sun. Because no, yeah. Um, Just quickly, I I cannot remember the last day that it didn't rain here, and we've got a huge yeah. storm that's hitting um, uh, tomorrow. So Saturday, there's a huge storm hitting us, and it feels like the rest of Europe has just taken all of the sun, and yeah. we're not getting any this this summer. Yeah, no. This Have you heard about Norway? Your... <laughs> <laughs> it's just UK with not sharing uh, rain. <laughs> no, 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 being selfish. No. I said Brexit. We can't explain yeah. the rain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, we have an ongoing flood crisis in Norway. Yeah. What, at the moment? Yeah. We're lasting nearly three, two weeks, I think, at the moment. Yeah. And it's uh, going to be another another hit in a couple of valleys no. um, this weekend or something. Yeah. So, uh, small tangential thing in hijacking red. Uh, I was supposed to go visiting my dad next weekend for his birthday, but... Uh, the, the the trains the main bridge connecting the north with trains fell down yeah oh, yeah. wow yeah it fell down it it, it was yeah. washed out and it was hanging and looking weird yeah. for a couple of days and then collapsed <laughs> um, as they should yeah just just to kind of circle back around to what red was saying though um it, it's interesting that you say like when i said about the fact obviously i know you for the blacksmithing stuff i think for all of us we're there's a couple of things that we're known for um, like uh, in the community at, at large. But I think different groups of people will know us for different things. Mm -hmm. Because as you were talking, I was thinking about the fact that actually, I suppose, really, I'm, no, I'm also known uh, by some people for the videos that I made mm -hmm. um, and the videos that I'm going to start making again or the photography that I do. Mm -hmm. um, but there are groups of people over in like the States that I know and I hang out with that have zero idea that I have even made a video mm -hmm. have no idea that i'm on a podcast but they know me really well for blacksmithing um yeah. and i think it's interesting the way that different kind of um groups and different um segments of the community kind of focus in on different aspects of our um personalities and what we kind of do as well yeah, yeah. you're different people to different groups even even yeah. to yourself if you think growing up yeah you were a different person with your parents than you were with your friends yeah mm -hmm. and we all probably have a very similar view of each other because we've yeah. known each other a similar amount of time. Mm -hmm, but yeah. to someone who's, say, just found Red's videos, they might be like, oh, this laser, laser guy does leather as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll have that cool. joy of being able to go through your back catalogue and go like, oh, he's really good at leather stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. hopefully. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. you know, there, there's also, I, I absolutely agree with everything that you've said, but there is always probably, I, I'm asking you guys, what you are known for and what you would like to be known for. Mm. And personally, I would like to be known for my leather work and my metal work of forging because honestly, wood, uh, woodworking is, is something that I do more for by necessity than by, by fun. Yeah. Um, mostly because wood is absolutely crazy expensive in France. Mm. So it, it's, it's cheaper to buy steel. Um, so that's As the thing. As it should be. As it should <laughs> be, absolutely. Um, but two restoration also are uh, by necessity. It, yeah. it just saves me money to buy a, uh, from buying a, a new to expensive tool. Yeah. So that I, I made video because I wanted to um, use that time 
spent on a restoration to do something else, like to 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 make it worth it. Yeah. Like I, filming the video and sharing what I've been doing could help someone. Mm. And I, as it has been suggested to me uh, for the past two weeks, I should also make videos about me for fixing my car. And yeah, I agree because first of all, it would make a lot of views <laughs> because mm. a lot of people have similar issues with similar cars. But also it's something that it could help people. Like I've spent... Uh, honestly, more hours on my car with my dad trying to figure out what's the problem and how to fix it yeah. than fixing it. Mm. And oftentimes the solution was watching a YouTube video, seeing a guy fix the same issue, trying the same thing. Yeah. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but the, the video really helped. So yeah, I, yeah there is this, this part of me that I, I, I'm happy to be known kind of quote unquote known for my little work, but I would also really like to be known for my middle work or my forging because that's that's the really two things that I love so much. And yeah. and also I would like to find a way to combine it. And that's one of the things that I'm I'm really thinking about this. I would like I'm I'm thinking about it a lot um this summer. Yeah. But we'll get back to that in the podcast. I feel like you're months. nearly <laughs> surfing around another big part of what I think you're known for, though. Which is? Reaching out to people and helping people. Yeah. Like, you never I... think about you should make videos about your car because you should keep your YouTube channel alive and keep making content so that you can keep making money. Mm -hmm. You immediately went to say, like, this can help other people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'm not aware of that, honestly, but that, okay. Who cool. was it that started yeah. texting Tuesday? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah okay. Yeah, but sure. But it, I, I don't have to, I'm not aware that if it's working or not, I'm not aware and I'm not, I guess it's just probably a part of who I am. And, yeah. and so it, it's, not, exactly. it's not something that I do uh, consciously. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. But, but yeah, I feel like that's yeah. a very big part of what you're known for. Okay. Yeah. Because you're all you're always maybe not first, but you're always there to give encouragement and help people. Yeah. And you interact with a hell of a lot of people. I know that. Yeah. yeah I'm trying to. I and, think. That's and you're a great really person for, for if someone has a question, you're a great person for people to go to and say, "I'm not sure how to do this," and you you're always able to offer some kind of help or advice, even if it's not to do with making. Um, yeah. Like if ever yeah. anybody with any, any of the, the group chats or anything like that has an issue, you're, you're always one of the first people to kind of uh, like Rasmus said, to, to give encouragement and to, to give help and advice, even if it's not like a, a solution to mm. just offer some form of help, even if it's just lightening someone's spirits. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's a really good shout Raz. What about you, Raz? Like, what would you like to be known for? Less food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, I kind of don't know. I feel like a lot of people who get to know me very quickly realize like how much swing dancing I actually do and how much video mm -hmm. games, all of those sort of really not blacksmithy, yeah. big, burly, bushy stuff. And that's still like very much who I am at the core, even though like swing dancing is a really new thing for me. Yeah. It, but then again, I've been doing it for like six years at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for all of you, I guess it's something that I kind of always did, but I just yeah. started when we met. So I maybe didn't advertise it as much back then. But I don't know. Every every time we do something and we go out and people you look at people and go, why aren't they dancing? <laughs> like, that's yeah. what other people do when they dance yeah like, oh this is boring <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, which is very much how it just got colored for me because like now i know what i can do but i need someone else to do it with yeah without yeah. that bit turning sexual yeah <laughs> <laughs> you would look a bit weird swinging dancing around on your own yeah <laughs> a little bit that being so, said i know some really cool jazz routines yeah, that's quite true. So is that what you'd like to be known more for then, actually, your your non-makery stuff? I think so. Nice. But I guess that's sort of on the 
flip side of all of this because making things is my job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I very much enjoy it, but like I only get so much relaxation and mental break from going to my job and do making. Yeah. So doing all the other things has turned into what lots of people with a full-time job get from going to making, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you still need an outlet that's not yes. your your nine to five. Yeah, that's that, that was the word outlet. Yeah, yeah. nice. I like it. Mm. What I about you people? Do you like? I was gonna, well, I was going to say for us. <laughs> I think a lot of a lot of people who listen to the podcast probably do get that. Yeah, because yeah, you, you'll talk about karate mm. in Japan, or you're like you're learning all these other languages, and it's easy. Maybe when people you know look at Instagram, it's like, oh, this is a blacksmith. But you, know, you listen to the podcast and you get to see those other sides of you. And you know, we do make fun of you a lot for many different reasons. Some of them justified. <laughs> yeah. but... I am aware. Some of them yeah. are justified. Yeah, but Very it's just like the, the I'm Steve uh, stickers. It's it's just love. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't love someone, you don't, you don't appreciate someone, you just don't talk about that person. Yeah. So making fun is just one way to manifest love to someone. When I started to to know Raz a little bit better outside of the maker community, when we started to chat, when we started to um, make Japanese class, do a Japanese class, I was surprised and amazed, literally amazed by all the things that you do outside your job. Dancing, learning new languages, video games, all the hobbies and the podcast, the, the hobbies that you have and the podcast that you listen to, the amount of knowledge that you have at only 14 is astonishing. <laughs> no, but really. No, I, um, okay. I'm going to step in here. I'm going to clear things up. <laughs> Rasmus is, is literally days, maybe you know, weeks younger than me. Yeah. I'm putting, yeah. I'm putting an end to this now. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, no. We are in so much fun. You're a doctor, I'm, James, so it I'm, doesn't count. <laughs> you're, you're, you, have, you have the right age. It's funny that you you uh, you said that you were so surprised by it. Like I, I think when when I first, I guess like the first impression I got from Raz, like from Instagram or, or whatever, was as you know a, a, another blacksmith and didn't think too much of it. And then, but as soon as I started talking to him, like the 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 sheer energy the guy has. Like it did yeah. not surprise me at all that he's got many other hobbies because that he just doesn't have an off switch. Like yeah. it, it would surprise me more to learn that Rasmus sleeps than <laughs> yeah. anything else. Like, charge. Yeah, I, I, I can't <laughs> imagine you having downtime. Like it's, and it's one of the things that I, I love about you is the fact that you are. There's just always something else, and it's you're always you seem happiest when you're um when you when you've got something else on the horizon when you're on your way to do something or you're you know you're you're dancing or you're gaming or you're doing whatever like you're very you're very, you're very passionate about your passions um and it's it's really infectious and it's really nice to see and that's again like with with the podcast it's always really nice to hear that um that passion come through um yeah. so i think you are well on your way to being known for the things outside of making it's just the fact that it's it it's being released through this podcast and through um like the the times that you do share that stuff uh on your show socials yeah thank you i yeah. think i think there was a compliment in there somewhere it, it was kind of a compliment yeah, yeah, kind, well, kind of, kind of. yeah. yeah. but um but yeah all right so we we like because obviously we've embarrassed rasmus enough now uh <laughs> What about you? What would you like most like to be known for? Yeah, uh, before you answer that, uh, I forgot to say something. You're also known to be a doctor. And, uh, yeah. and, and yeah. it's, it's a big part of who you are and who you, how you are perceived by other people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. No, like, I mean, if you, if you look at the Fall to Tools Facebook group, there was, when it was very small right at the beginning, um, there's a, a a Lego photo, uh, a photo of some Lego yeah. people. Yeah, and you can look through and go, oh, there's the pirate. There's a person who does pottery, and it, my one is a person holding a green bottle, wearing a lab coat. Yeah, mm. which you know, it, brewing beer, being a doctor, and yeah. on my Instagram it says maker, brewer, doctor, in that order, mm. and 
literally everyone that I know knows you as Dr. Malty. Yeah. Yeah. And ironically. It, even. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I don't I don't have a PhD, so I'm not uh I'm not a proper doctor, but I'm a I'm the doctor that a three year old would think of when they think of a doctor. Yeah. I mean, you're the more useful version of a doctor. Yeah. 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 It, do, it does. It does rile up the PhDs though when you say useful doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think to an extent, because there are other doctors within our group of friends within the maker community, mm. but maybe I'm not. I'm more known for being a doctor than other people mm. um either just through coincidence or because dr multi sounds quite good yeah. yeah i think a lot a lot of it is the name the name yeah. helps um and i think that like, in a way it's something i don't i don't mind being known for people often say oh yeah well can i ask you a medical question i, was like, I don't mind at all quite like it uh because it's my job yeah and i've talked before about how i wouldn't want to be a full-time maker because i really enjoy the problem solving aspect of my job the challenge and i get like raz different things from making as you yeah. do from your hobbies mm -hmm. um and while my work is definitely not a hobby and it has its challenging moments it's still something i enjoy doing mm. so i think that's that's something i don't mind being known for at all but i think if i had to pin it down to one thing it's probably i'd like to be known for Oh, go ask, go ask Malty. He'll know. Mm. Yeah, I would say you're pretty darn close to being that person. Already. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Like, I, I mean, I do. It's something I think <clears> about <throat> a lot, and I, I do work towards it because there's lots of you know. We, I think all of us are doing the same. But you can. You know, it's the uh, fake it till you make it. Yeah. If you if you just keep working towards it. Yeah. You know, so a lot of buying machinery and tools is oh, I want to be able to do that. At the moment, I'm in a place in life where I can just go and get those things uh, very imminently. That's going to change, yes. uh, I suspect. <laughs> uh, so part of it is, oh, what skills can I learn? Can I get a really basic idea of blacksmithing, of leatherwork, of woodworking, of chemistry? Yeah. Um, so that at some point people can come to me and say, oh, do you know how to do wet plate photography? And I go, uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think you you have a a good base knowledge on so many things that mm. it, it's one of those again you might not be the expert in that field so yeah I I might not come to you for a question about blacksmithing but I would certainly go to you not. <laughs> I would certainly go to you for questions on photography or on industrial machines or yeah I, absolutely on machines or, that that's the person I would contact James yeah. would be the first person that. that pops up in my head if I had 100%. an issue with the, a machine that I just yeah. bought and I couldn't fix or make work. But even more than that, like if, if it was just a question where I was like, I need an answer for this and I have no idea who would actually know, like James is, is definitely on the, I, I was going to say top five, but probably the top three people that I would just mm -hmm. go, I can ask James, he might know someone or like, sorry. Yeah, he might know, or he might know someone that knows because the other person that I would go to is Andy Pugh, because not that I would expect Andy to know, but I would expect him to know someone that would know sort of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. And so the third yeah. one would be Jamie. So yeah. James, Andy, Jamie, and you're, you're safe. You, yeah. If you have them yeah. in the people that you know, you can but, and pretty much have any answer that you, you so Those Those yeah. three people is the hat trick of friends you want to bring to a deserted island. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So can I can I rebrand as Chat MLT? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you can. That's, that's no, the other thing no. you're known for is terrible <laughs> jokes and puns. Because <laughs> I'm practicing with good reason. This is this is the idea. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Adequately timed, somewhat humor. <laughs> Should we focus on something else? Yeah. There you had no you have no idea how hard it was for me to not interrupt and start doing the uh the segue then because there was just slightly too long of a pause and i was like nope raz has got it raz has got it he's just yeah. finishing his tea <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just... gonna ask if we had an order <laughs> <laughs> no we do not because it's chaos here oh, yes it is <laughs> it's the land of anarchy and fractions
apparently. Uh, I want to start though. Good, because I Go don't. For it. And my focus is Henry Cavill. Yes. Just I don't know as, why, but yes. Just as a human being, <laughs> blanket statement, that man is fantastic. Yeah, yeah I agree. But I also finished watching season three of The Witcher. Yeah. Ah. And the, the, it is a fantastic, the good season. And yeah. it is a absolute tragedy that there won't be a fourth with him. Yeah. 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 Steve, what are you doing next year? Do you, are you free to... <laughs> oh, stop it. Now, I've, I've told him so many times. And uh, it doesn't come from me. It comes from my wife. She first noticed the resemblance that you have with Henry Cavill. And the more I see you, the more I look at you, and the more I, I know you, the more I think it's true. You have the same voice. You have kind of the same face. Yeah, so... I, I've made there, my point. There, there is nothing I can, I can say. So I'm just gonna say. No, you, thank yeah, you. those, yeah, okay. yeah. Good. Don't, don't, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, for for me, it was just. I mean, the season in itself is really, really good. But what I found yeah. is that this might be the funniest season of The Witcher as well. Oh, really? And uh, there's a lot of the character development that happens in Geralt. Yeah. yeah. Like. He actually has the motions by the end of the seasons. Bloody. Yeah. There's, there's a lot less. Oh, a cool monster, a new one that we're going to kill this week. Yeah. There's a yeah. there's a lot more complex story. There's character yeah. development. And there's a lot more of mm, in the dialogue <laughs> of Henry Cavill as well. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's a good, very good one. And that that's what makes it so much worse, so to speak, that there won't be a fourth with him because like, this is now what the witcher is in my mind like yeah, yeah he is the yeah. stoic the yeah. gruff the silent fella but he has range he has depth to him and we yeah. see this in season three now yeah and then it stops because contract issues and well it's not henry cavill's fault really because no. he as far as i understood he is such a massive nerd that i think he nearly didn't get a job as superman because he was raiding in world of warcraft yep yeah he missed yeah. the role. yeah yeah, yeah. uh which is just hilarious. And like he's doing streaming. He's built his own computer recently on a stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, he's just delightful. And he was a fan of the Witcher games before he got the role of playing Geralt. And, and when books. and he was the annoying part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was the annoying fella on set that went to the prop department and said, like, yeah, so so this this doesn't work because in the book it's like this instead. Mm -hmm. And kept like fact checking everything. Yeah. Probably to the annoyance of everybody else, but that, that's what makes the show good. Yeah, many of the producers he's... that that's why he hasn't been renewed. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, great, I great really mod. pity the guy that's gonna try to reprise the role because it's gonna be a, a shitstorm yeah. for him. Yeah, I mean, so there's even been rumors back and forth. So. What? I think I feel like there's been rumors back and forth. Uh, no, no, to... it's done now. Yeah. And so they have decided. I thought the last thing I heard was that, that no one will play Geralt again and it, like... no 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 it's decided it's contracted it's yeah. uh it's Answer the entrance the uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's been that for a while hasn't it yeah oh, it's, okay it, it's yeah. known for more than a year yeah almost a year almost a year oh okay then I just been looking at shit I guess <laughs> you've, you've been too busy working that's what it is yeah, yeah that's I'm playing that. Elden Ring yeah. <laughs> I haven't played Elden Ring in a long time yeah I'm two days saying. <laughs> two months, I think. What? Yeah, you because get it. because of this it. Magnum. <laughs> yeah, and Opus Magnum, which I, I did finish the main story off yesterday. Yeah, good. Have good. you That's played awesome. Baldur's Gate yet? No, I have not. I yeah, I know, I know. I'm... I actually tried to debate when it came out or yeah. open access to it four years ago or something, and I was like, really interesting, really fancy, but I couldn't get myself into it proper back then. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, so, I know. I will give it a second try, but not I'm, yet. Like I'm tempted to try and fix my PC so that I can actually see if I can play it on yeah. that. But I, I don't know if I've got the. I, I don't have the time to yeah, dedicate yeah. to it. That's the problem. Yeah. Um. I've also forgotten who I was going to. Yeah, sorry. Carry on. James, what's your, what's your focus, Steve? Uh, no. Oh, I, <laughs> I'll go next. James, go. <laughs> I'll go next, and I'm going to do what uh, I think is technical technically called a reverse Brett, where I focus oh. on someone who I sent something to. <laughs> uh, and that is the 
Wisdom of Window Washer, the Ice Cream Organizer, the Tongue Brush Brusher, Multi Autism Studios. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, everyone probably thinks of Daniel, uh, who is the the face and beard of Multi Autism Studios, but there's also Phil, uh, Phil FX, and Hannah, who's their new intern. Uh, so it's a, a kind of a group effort for what has probably made my week uh, an amazing reel they've done of uh, the international Maker Sticker Throwing Challenge Austria yeah. edition. Uh, Agreed. I just, I've seen that uh, just seen before yet. the recording and it was brilliant. Yeah, it has it has come out in the last couple of hours and it made it a very easy thing to focus on because I think he is a fantastic member of the maker community mm -hmm. that you maybe don't think of straight away, but everything that he's done is just really cool from the tongue brush to the uh the let glue dry paper template. Um and he always puts little Easter eggs or things that other people in the maker community have made and kind of the backgrounds of his yeah. videos and there's some real attention to detail in what he does so uh go and have a look at his instagram it's multi awesome studios um and if you're looking for kind of visual effects internships they do those uh or just like for work he's a really cool guy so hopefully yeah. i'll get to meet up with him at some point soon i think i might be in danger of meeting him this weekend i know i'm, I'm very jealous i've got other plans unfortunately mm. yeah sorry <laughs> i just started watching the reel and it's incredible so um, good so good i i'm gonna finish watching that when i'm not on a podcast yeah <laughs> that's amazing yeah it was um, really good yeah good it, job. It, i mean i know it's kind of within his day-to-day -day job doing things like that yeah but the amount of effort he puts into things that he posts on instagram and youtube yeah for really short videos it's amazing yeah that's incredible yeah good shout good shout absolutely yeah. man yep ready Steve. me <laughs> yes sorry <laughs> uh i uh i'm fo focusing on i have to think about which podcast it was then uh i <laughs> i this week i've been focusing uh i felt like uh, what's his name from uh i was gonna make a reference to a 90s comedy sketch show and realized that James is possibly the only person that would get that, and oh, that's right. You can do it. You can do it for the listeners. There's someone yeah. in their car who's waiting for. As I say, yeah, because it was it the fast show where it was this week. I have been mostly wearing yes. turnips. Yeah. Um. Yes. <laughs> um. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there are plenty of people in their cars right now. Okay. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll send you guys a video so you understand. Um. But yeah, no, this week I, I've actually been chatting a lot recently to Sam Ritty. Mm -hmm. Um and uh and we've we've talked about potentially doing some little collabby sort of bits, um, which I'm super excited about. And uh and yeah, he's he like I love Sam to bits. He's such a, a, a lovely person. I'm actually going up to see him on Sunday. Um and like I just I really like the the way he does like I'm I don't wear jewelry like the the iso tunes around my neck are the most that like i wear in well that and hitting my microphone that it's and very, very topical for the podcast to do that don't worry <laughs> that and having a, a hairband around my thumb that's as close as i get to wearing jewelry normally um so i will probably never own anything that that sam makes just because I don't, I don't wear anything but i love all of it and it's very much kind of like if i war jewelry then i would definitely want to own some of his stuff I, I mean i want to own some of it anyway i just wouldn't wear it um and yeah like just really cool really interesting stuff like incredibly well done like the fact that most of it is carved with uh out of wax with like a mora knife so it's not like it's even like really you know, yeah 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 he uses like a, a, a mora sweets get everywhere yeah, i know but the, the more like i don't understand why anyone would buy any other kind of knife because moras are just they're so cheap and so good yeah i know that being I, said i've i've got a couple of knives if anyone wants to <laughs> buy <laughs> um, well, that's very shameless but, yeah <laughs> but yeah no i i just love the the work that sam does and he again he's he's one of those people that is super super um keen to share his experience and his knowledge like if you have i was going to say when you were doing talking about the ring like sam would be a really good person to speak to about yeah how else you could do it um and he's full of knowledge and more than happy to share it. Yeah, I, I definitely need to send him a message. I mean, yeah. I, I 
I might have already had like the thought 10 times already that, yeah, that's probably someone I could talk about jewelry with if I have questions. Yeah. And yeah. then when I have questions, I don't remember who I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. I get that a lot. Um, you know, but yeah, just, nice. just for anyone who doesn't know how to spell his surname. Yes, it is. Uh, so the thingy is Sam as in S A M underscore R I T T E T T E. Um, funny. Yes, Sam Ritty. Because I spent and, years not knowing how to spell it. It was like, Rit, Ritty, yeah. Ritar? Yeah, it's it's, it's in the description of the episode yeah. already. Uh, some, pe- some people listen in their car and forget. Yeah. And forget by the end of the beginning yeah. of what you've said and go, oh, that person sounded really good. Yeah. Yeah, he's talking about me right there. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a month when you have actually caught up to this podcast and you can listen to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they- oh, this guy sounds keep- so interesting. <laughs> that's the thing is so i actually i've listened to some quite recent episodes in fact i've listened to the most recent episode yeah i just had skipped a load and hadn't so i go through phases of like listening to podcasts and not listening to podcasts depending on what i'm doing and i've not done anything that's been podcast kind of work if you know what i mean um so yeah i've just not not listened Uh, i've missed a load of episodes um and i'm just going back through and kind of trying to catch up on on everything now which i i've realized as well makes no sense to anyone listening to this no. uh, but for those listening that don't know what's what i'm talking about i sent both rasmus and red voice notes uh, earlier today because i was listening yeah. to from last month maybe the month before uh yeah where making points and i was like oh you should do this um so I just gave them my unsolicited advice uh for an episode that they probably don't even remember recording no, i mean if it was the one if it was the one where Red was fixing his car and Rasmus was moving <laughs> shop, then yeah, don't worry. It'll, 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 advice will carry over. Yeah. It'll come back around. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> and Yam was probably driving somewhere. Yeah. Bless him. I missed him. Uh, yeah. Red? Yeah. Uh, Red? So mine is going to be Bruce Reed Studio and more specifically Leah Jeffrey. I think he, he, I pronounced it correctly. Uh, that's a, an account that I stumble upon on Instagram, and I, you know, how much I love uh, metalworking and forging in general. But yeah. she's an artist. She's making a sculpture with, I think it's uh, salvaged parts or recycled yeah. parts. Yeah. And the way she makes birds is absolutely stunning. I really like it I enjoyed the the aesthetic of it but it, she's not only doing birds she's doing a lot of different animals and 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 sculptures and it's i just find it beautiful and very poetic to use steel to make animals that kind of look alive if yeah you see what i mean yeah. It's um, amazing work, really. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I really enjoyed um, everything that, that, that she's posted so far. And uh, even though I didn't take the time to like everything uh, with a small red art that you put on Instagram, uh, I really recommend you to follow Leah Jeffrey on Instagram, Bruce Reed Studio. We'll put the link because there's underscore uh, at places, but yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of really cool work. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah. Bru- I mean, bruised reed is in like a you've got a you've been punched a thing that grows in water, like a reed. Like <laughs> a, yeah, wetlands. Wetlands, yeah. Bruised yeah. reed. Any last little tiddly bits? Nope, nothing for me. No, just wishing Jan well and hope he enjoyed the episode. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Hope he, he gets well uh soon yeah and, and comes back uh, because next week i won't be there <laughs> i'm on holidays starting now yeah fuck so off no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes and no it, well I, by the time this episode is actually out uh, uh i will be nearly on my way home from make it for hanover yeah yeah oh yeah so I'm very, very jealous of everyone yeah. going yeah. yeah have fun guys i wish i was there same we too but if people want to do some friendly stalking steve 
Uh, you can find me at Moonshine Metalworks. It's so nearly <laughs> carried on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and James? Uh, I'm Malt and Make on Instagram, YouTube, and you can sign up to my newsletter. It's free. It's on my website, which is maltandmake.com. It's only just launched, so go and have a look, see if you like it. And hopefully without more technical issues. Oh, God, it's worse than a blue car. <laughs> 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 and if you want to get a hold of the rest of the podcast that's normally here, you can do that at Two Thirds Focused on any of the mostly social places. And you can find me at Rasmus Lewin and LewinSmith.no. And you can find me at Red Smith or The Red Smith on the internet everywhere, but only in two weeks. Ooh. Yeah, because now for the next week, you will be able to find me next to the sea or a swimming pool. Shocking. Yeah. Imitating a sea lion or manatee or something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Probably not <laughs> dried on the sun because it's going to be the area. <laughs> thank you both for being on absolutely thank you for having us yeah thank you so much you're very we'll welcome. regret it in the morning <laughs> <laughs> already do yeah. yeah have a good week bye-bye cheers guys bye